The new entry into Canon Keys' Satisfaction lineup is here, and that is the Satisfaction 75X. Now this is their budget version, and it has a bunch of cool features that I wanted to talk about. Now they did send this over for my honest review, and that is exactly what we're going to do. So this keyboard will start off at $111 and will go on pre-order on August 15th. This will buy you the top and bottom case, the knob that will match the case color, top and bottom gasket shims, a clear polycarbonate plate, a hot swap or soldered PCB, a hot swappable white OLED screen, silicone gasket, silicone feet, stabilizers, all the stuff you could ask for and of course they do also include a very nice carrying case which is awesome to see. The first thing I wanted to talk about is pretty much all the features that made me really like this keyboard for what it was. So this keyboard PCB is backwards compatible with their more premium options in the satisfaction lineup round one and round two. So in the future, if you did want to upgrade to a more premium aluminum feel, you wouldn't have to swap out the PCB. All you would have to do is get the plate associated with the round one and round two, which I thought was a very nice feature. Another thing, this keyboard is very easy to build. The encoder is already pre-soldered and the OLED screen being hot swappable means if you ever run into screen burn-in issues, the swap out and the fix for that will be very simple and easy. So I'm really happy to see that. This keyboard kind of is hitting that budget entry level market for people barely getting to the scene and I think it does a really good job of that. The only thing I think it's missing from inside the box is there is no foam or anything included that'll have to be purchased separately. For my build they did include the silicone plate and silicone bottom case foam I guess you could say. So for you guys to just get an understanding that is what I'm going to be using. Now the build process is just as easy as it looks. I put the silicone at the bottom it is very thick a bit too thick I'd say and another thing to point out is that there is no daughter board so if you're wanting a lot of flex this keyboard won't have a lot of it but it still had good enough. And if you wanted to add more flex, my recommendation would be to not include the silicone case foam and just use some plate foam that you can also buy separately when this keyboard goes live. But a really cool feature this keyboard has is you can actually remove all of the silicone little chips on the top, bottom, and left and right side of the keyboard. So if you wanted to remove the left and right side, to give you more of a flexier typing experience or softer typing experience, I would definitely suggest doing that. Also, if you don't like the feel of silicone gaskets, they will be offering foam gaskets as a separate add-on that you can purchase as well, just to change it up a bit. So the biggest thing this keyboard has going for it is even though it is very simple and easy to build, there's a lot of customization and thought put into it, which makes it so good. And I really like the fact that they included both a knob and a screen. The switches I'm going to be using today are the CKX Haimu Pastel Peach Linear Switches. And the keycaps I'll be using are Canon Keys' nice PBT November Fog. So with all that being said, once I put everything together and lube the stabilizers, this is how it sounds. So yeah, overall, I do think it has a very nice sound signature. Me personally, I don't think the silicone is worth it and I probably never would purchase it myself. Maybe the case and plate foam, but I'm never a big fan of silicone because it is more absorbent than case foam. So it sounds kind of dead. So that's just my personal opinion. Obviously, that's very personal preference. But other than that, I think the price obviously is not the most affordable and you could probably find a better deal in the Neo 
lineup of keyboards or even some other more premium tad bit more expensive aluminum keyboards from QK or Wu Che Studios and stuff like that so while it technically isn't the best bang for your buck because it is using plastic which of course correlates with a less premium sound and feel for some people it is a very fun keyboard that I think has a lot of nice features last but not least it does support QMK and V and that screen is customizable. Other than that, I'll be leaving a link to this keyboard in the description below, but let me know what you guys thought about the Canon Keys Satisfaction 75X in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.